While everyone is present at the night festival, Mr. Killens Jules addresses them. In his words, he tells everyone that until a day before, they had planned to have a musical band perform for them. But, along with the band, a special pig will be gracing the stage. Mr. Pig thinks to himself that he would have totally forgotten that part, while Mr. Killens tells them that he has no doubt in his mind that this will be something they have never seen before and urges the people to sit patiently and watch. Mr. Pig remembers that he was the kid who got so nervous he did stammer just introducing himself to his classmates. Now, he's going to dance in front of a big crowd. He wonders if Jess is really cheering him on like the brave soul she is, while he feels that he will cradle his head on her soft thighs when he's done, lick her face like a dog, and drench her with his slobber. Jess calls his attention to her, saying she can hear all his thoughts, which brings him back to reality. The bands are ready to get started with the show, while Mr. Killen urges Mr. Pig to also get started with the dancing. He falls as he completes the dance. His steps are amazing and fantastic to the view of all the audience, which also impresses Mr. Killen. He has brought a lot of people to the festival, which is a satisfaction to him. His legs hurt, but when he sees Jess come to his side, Jess asks him to stay with Mr. Killen that night to help him. Still, he tells her to go home because he does not want to be imposed upon by the house, Kilterin, any longer. He assures her that his young guys will take care of everything. At this time, Mr. Pig also stands up and tells her to go home, just as Mr. Killen has said, and assures her that he will be fine. He tells her that if he stays any longer, they will start suspecting her after he has escaped, which is what he wants to avoid. Before she goes away, she tells Mr. Pig that she will wait for him under the tree by morning, and so she bids Mr. Killen goodbye, then leaves. Mr. Killen also leaves the shop for his guys, and just after he leaves, they ask Mr. Pig, who has been thinking about how he will escape with his fractured leg, to at least do something for them. And just as they said this, he stands to dance, but after dancing for some minutes, he starts shaking his head somehow, which seems to his audience that the collar by which he is tied seems too tight for him. Then one man tells the bar guy to go remove the collar from his neck, while the guy responds that it will be for 10 gold per bottle of drink. Just as he has drawn it, they remove the physical barrier from his neck, and now all that is left is the human barrier. He challenges one of the audience members to dance, while the barman suggests that anyone who wants to dance with him will have to buy a drink. On and on, all the audience agrees to this, and so they become drunk, which aids his escapade. He has escaped and must now head to the meeting point. He feels that Jess must not know about his wounds, as she might end up using the black Rista again. As he continues going, he sees some people whom he senses he must dodge to attract less attention. While he goes ahead to pass another route, he is shocked to hear a man pleading with his boss about how the pig with her made a run for it. He could sense that it was the dealer Jess met earlier. The boss tells him to make things look like an accident, and if it does not work that way, he can kill her, which will be done by trailing her to a mansion and getting it set. Mr. Pig becomes unsettled and thinks it's best to tail the man. When he comes out of his route to follow them, he cannot find the guy. However, with his sharper eyes and keener sense of smell than humans, he knows for sure the stale smell of unwashed hair and its mint-like fragrance. Finally, he finds the man, noticing that the man does not have a good leg. He wonders if getting ahead of him will be better. He has a bag with him, and its contents are unclear to Mr. Pig. The mention of the Yethman Hunter they discussed earlier is also unclear to him. All these thoughts fill his mind as he wonders if they will survive if they escape and the pursuers come after them. He contemplates how he can make them give up on the idea of killing her. Time is running out, and he must meet Jess before the man reaches her. He begins to run as fast as he can, despite his wounded leg. He eventually arrives at the house before the man and calls out to Jess, but she seems to be sleeping. According to the villains, House Kiltern's influence is as powerful as Jess has said, and they know where the mansion is. This means they can't kill her on the House Kiltern grounds. Mr. Pig predicts that the man will keep an eye on the mansion until Jess comes out and ambushes her as soon as she emerges. So he plans to lie and wait for Jess outside the mansion. Jess will be heading to the farm before sunrise, and Mr. Pig wonders if there's some way he can inform her about what's going on. With no experience in such matters, he has no clue how to proceed. He reflects on how Jess helped him when he was covered in mud, using a black rista, with no regard for the consequences. He knows he shouldn't let thoughts of romance enter his mind at a time like this. He can't help but believe she is going to arrive way earlier as the agreed time. When he gets to the tree, he's amazed to find Jess already there. He asks if she came early to wait for him, but she's sleeping and doesn't hear him. 
Her hands look rough, like those of a hard worker, and he believes that harming a child like her should be beyond any human's capability. He assures himself that he won't let Jess get hurt, and if the man tries anything, he'll defend her with everything he has. Jess eventually wakes up, and they share a brief hug. Mr. Pig quickly informs her that the man who was selling Risty in the back alley in the afternoon is on his way to kill her. He's getting close, and his intent is to silence her. He explains to her that they are involved in shady business, and if House Kilterin, their masters, find out about it, they'll be in grave danger. In fear, Jess responds that she can't tell anyone about this. Mr. Pig reassures her that he's sure she wouldn't, but that doesn't matter to villains like them. Jess asks him what she should do, and she's concerned that he may never regain his human form. Angrily, Mr. Pig questions how she can worry about him at such a time, then suggests they put their heads together and figure things out. She suggests that they run away together. He tells her that it won't solve anything because they will surely be pursued, and she might be attacked when she returns. He suggests the best course of action is to inform the Kiltern family about the villain's deeds and have them arrested. Jess wonders if they would go to such lengths just for her. This surprises Mr. Pig, and he asks if she hasn't served them for long. She explains that she's just a Yethman and that, in terms of rank, House Kilterin and herself couldn't be further apart. Besides, she's never seen them pay attention to anything she might say. Mr. Pig tells Jess that if anything were to happen, it wouldn't favor House Kilterin either, especially since she's still in her peak working stage. Jess apologizes to Mr. Pig and admits that she doesn't want to go back to the mansion. He senses her sincerity and suggests that she can explain her reasons later. He asks if there's any way to create a situation that would force House Kiltern to take action. He also inquires if there's a facility on the farm where they could lock someone up. Jess mentions that there's a masonry warehouse, and if they lock it from the inside, it would be impossible to get out. She plans to retrieve the key from the kitchen. Mr. Pig reminds her to be careful and make sure she isn't caught while getting the key. He further suggests that, even though she's a servant, she can leave a note for the people of House Kilterin. Mr. Pig reassures Jess that the man is targeting her, not him, and the worst case scenario would be her running off by herself. He assures her not to worry as long as he doesn't mess up. He walks toward a campfire, knowing that the man might think Jess is there too, but his goal is to make the man stay in one place so his pupils will constrict and the visual pigment in his rod cells will be depleted due to light adaptation. With this signal, Jess acts as planned. Human eyes take time to adjust to darkness, and given Mr. Pig's condition, he believes he won't be able to spot Jess. He begins to walk toward the warehouse, with the man following closely. Jess positions herself behind the door, ready for action. When Mr. Pig enters the warehouse, he senses a window that the man could use for an escape despite his injured leg. Mr. Pig hides in a corner and, as the man enters, attacks his leg, causing him to fall. The man manages to stand up again, but Mr. Pig strikes him with his head, causing the man to fall once more, this time struggling to stand. Mr. Pig makes a run for it, unaware that he's been stabbed by the man. As he escapes the warehouse, Jess closes the door, but Mr. Pig is already weak and falls to the ground. Jess cries out for him to stay alive and not die. Mr. Pig reassures her not to worry, even though the pain makes him acutely aware that he's not dreaming but has truly found himself in an unfamiliar situation. She asks if he won't follow her to the capital, to which he responds that she shouldn't worry about him and should focus on what she needs to do. She mentions that he hasn't even seen her naked, as he had told her to save it for the right time. He teasingly calls her a scrawny, four-eyed virgin. He starts to feel sleepy, realizing that blood loss must be affecting the flow of oxygen to his brain. Compared to dying of food poisoning, he wonders what greater bliss there could be than having a beautiful young girl at his deathbed. Memories of the moments they've spent together flood his mind while she pleads with him not to leave her alone. Thank you for watching our latest episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment, and if you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. We look forward to bringing you more entertaining content in the future.